Good day everyone. I am Roslyn Adoro. And I'm Marshall Korani. I'm topic is all about summative test performance base. Learning objectives. At the end of these lessons, learners are expected to first identify the different essential components of performance based assessment. Second, analyze the types of performance based assessment. And last, realize the advantages and disadvantages of performance based assessment. Summative test. Summative assessment is an important part of the assessment process and is incredibly valuable to both students and faculty. It improves curriculum planning and new learning criteria to, as to assess and improve their school attainment levels. The five major features of summative assessment. First, authenticity. A test should examine real-world applications. It should be. It's one thing for students to memorize a fact or answer. It's another for them to comprehend the material in order for it to be helpful later in life. Second, validity. As closely as possible, testing needs to reflect the objectives to what in a certain period of time. Educators should already know learning goals before teaching a particular topic or in a certain time frame. Next, volume. Summative assessment should be used only when absolutely necessary to determine the level of learning that has been achieved. Too much volume leads to testing fatigue for both students and teachers and can inadvertently cause the quality of the testing to suffer. Fourth, variety. This factor has perhaps the largest impact on student's success in summative assessment. Every student demonstrates his or her knowledge in a specific way, and giving a one-dimensional test can adversely affect individual learners. And last, real reliability. The reliability of an assessment implies that it cons consistently produces similar results when given under similar conditions. The goal of summative assessment is to evaluate students' learning at the end of, the, of an instructional unit by co comparing it against some standards or benchmark. Examples of summative assessment includes first, midterm exam, second, a final project, third, a paper, fourth, a senior recital, and last, standardized tests that demonstrate school accountability are used for pupil admissions. The benefits of summative assessment. First, determines the achievement of a candidate. Summative evaluation are conducted at the end of an instructional period. This is a di diagnos diagnostic method compared to other types of tests. Second, the ideal for keeping academic records for future. The scores or grades available from summative evaluations are recorded into the student's academic records. This, reco this record marks help the students during the college admissions process. Next, identifies gap in a candidate learning. Identifying weak areas of, a can of the candidates give the tra trainers ample scope to review their instruct instructing patterns and deliver them to the candidates of improved outcomes. Fourth, diagnosis possible instructional gaps. This is a useful tool to find out the level of performance of the teachers and instructors. And last, motivates individual for self-improvement. Summative evaluation focuses on outcomes and these outcomes act as the boosting factor for the individual to take up the test. This assessment process motivates the candidates for further improvement. Some specific strategies for the 
summative assessment. First, hand out or give the syllables for each term at the end, at the beginning of the term. Giving the syllables at the beginning of the term helps students to orient and warm, warm into syllables and track it as the topics are studied over the term. This can be strengthened by the teachers pointing out the topic in the syllabus as it is studied. It gives them an important sense of control over their studies. Second, link the new topic with preceding one. Recapitulate the preceding one. Research in daily classroom experiences clearly show that learning is best when there is ongoing reinforcement and revision. Thus, as each topic or chapter is being studied, the teacher must try and link it with the preceding topic and at the end of each topic, chapter, do a look back or recapitulate the preceding one. Next, show sample summative assessment papers to students through the term. It is said we are comfortable with the familiar. Showing sample summative assessment papers to students helps them become comfortable with the paper requirements and format. Fourth, practice summative assessment papers. Explanation must be followed by practice. Summative assessment sample papers as time assignments or as home tasks so they become familiar with the pattern and become comfortable with the summative assessment paper. Number five, get the students to make questions and summative assessment sample papers. To make the sample paper, the students will need to study the, requir the required topics, understanding the question terms, work out the answers, allocate the time and marks. They will indirectly be assessing their own learning. Performance-based assessment. It is a set of strategies for the acquisitions and application of knowledge, skills, and work habits through the performance of tasks that, that are meaningful and engaging to students. The essential components of a performance-based assessment. First, complex. Second, authentic. Third, process product oriented. Fourth, open ended. And last, time bound. Types of performance based assessment. First, individual or group projects. Projects typically require students to apply their knowledge and skills while completing the prescribed task, which often calls for creativity, critical thinking, analysis, and synthesis. Indeed, group projects involve a number of students working together on a complex problem that requires planning, research, internal discussion, and presentation. Second, portfolio. Our systematic purpose poll and meaningful collections of an individual's work design to document learning over time. We have here the two types of portfolio. First, working portfolio. A repository of portfolio that documents that the students accumulate over a certain period of time. Other types of process information may also be included such as drafts of students' work, or records of students' achievement or progress over time. Second, showcase or mod model portfolio. A portfolio cons consisting of work samples selected by the student that document the student's best work. And also, the student has consciously evaluated his or her work and selected only those products that best represent the type of learning identified for this assessment. The next types of performance-based assessment is performances. Gameplay during a tournament is also considered a student performance. Rubrics for gameplay can be written so that the students are evaluated on all three learning disabilities, psychomotor, cognitive, and effective. Although performances do not produce a written products, there are several ways to gather data to use for assessment purposes. A score sheet can be used to record student performance using the criteria from the gameplay robots. Fourth, journals. 
that it can be used to record student feelings, thoughts, perceptions, or reflections about actual events or results. Advantages and disadvantages of performance-based assessment. Number one, collaboration. Number two, learner-centered. Number three, three domains are very useful in this type of assessment. Number four, the knowledge will retain in the memory of students. Number five, can promote students' creativity. Number six, using a student-centered design can promote student motivation. And last, may allow probes by faculty to gain clearer picture of students' understanding of those processes. This